is so cool. Today, we go back in time to the Gilded Age of America, beginning in the 1870s and ending at the turn of the century. Let me set the stage for you. The Transcontinental Railroad had just been completed, allowing for rapid expansion westward, contributing to the wealth of the railroad industry, as well as steel and timber. People flooded to the new country in search of a new start, contributing to the rapid growth of cities and the workforce, but without the structure or the rules in place to support this growth. People were packed into crammed slums when they arrived in America to only be forced to work 12-hour days with unlivable wages. Monopolies quickly formed as the wealthiest businesses and families shut out competition in industries like steel, railroad, oil, banking, meatpacking, mining, tobacco, and the textile industries. Today we explore the summer homes, or cottages as they referred to by the wealthy tycoons, like Cornelius Vanderbilt of the railroad industry, built along the coast in Newport, Rhode Island. All right, y'all, we're starting the cliff walk and we're gonna see some mansions, see some ocean. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's still cool though. Well, we don't actually explore the mansions themselves because you actually have to pay to go see them, which seems a little backwards to me. I'm not gonna go pay to see a mansion, so we're not doing that, but give it an old Google search. They're actually really pretty. And there's a lot of history to them, I know that. I'm a history buff too, but I can't justify paying $33 to go look at someone's mansion. We will, however, be taking a peek through the fence for free, so you're welcome for that. For anyone interested in getting a taste of the Gilded Age, the Cliff Walk in Newport, Rhode Island takes you up close to over 11 preserved mansions from this period in history. The unique architecture against the backdrop of the Atlantic Ocean is a stunning sight to see. This seven mile round trip hike is free for all to enjoy. It really transports you back in time to an era of corruption where the wealthiest people known as robber barons controlled the wages, politics, and prices of goods in America by completely monopolizing markets through bribery, intimidation, and sometimes force. Rockefeller of the oil industry, Carnegie of the steel industry, JP Morgan of the banking industry, and Vanderbilt of the railroad industry. Ah, what a time to be alive. Just doing some light house hunting. I think this one's a little bit too small for me, so let's just keep walking and see what else uh, pops out at us that's more appropriate for my lifestyle. This is way more my style, has a sunroom. I'll consider it. But we're still shopping. Yeah, this one's definitely more my speed. It should be able to fit me in my car. Journalists referred to as muckrakers exposed the realities of the Gilded Age by showing the huge inequality from the conditions of the slums to life in the mansions and the corruption happening behind the scenes in making this all happen. It was literature that exposed the harsh working conditions and living conditions that put pressure on lawmakers at the time to break up monopolies, regulate business practices, and create safe working conditions for people. Labor unions began to form, as well as worker strikes as conditions worsened for the middle and lower classes, many of whom were living below the poverty line. Guys, we are now entering into the splash zone. I hope we survive. <laughs> this is gonna be a bad idea. All right, here we go. <laughs> the sidewalk is so we're walking very quickly. <laughs> Keep walking, keep walking. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I usually don't mind getting wet, but it's very early in my day and I don't want to be walking around with wet feet the entire day. I mean, I could always change my shoes, but like that's work. As for the end of the Gilded Age, 
Well, a few railroad companies became overextended and eventually failed in the 1890s. This set off a stock market crash that triggered banks to collapse and unemployment to rise by 50%, leaving many Americans homeless. This lasted for a period of four years, leading into the progressive movement when Theodore Roosevelt was put into office. President Roosevelt led many programs cleaning up cities as well as protecting natural resources setting wage and price standards, and creating food and drug acts to ensure safe and sanitary business practices for consumers. Oh yes, I know I'm creeping on all these people's mansions, but like, they're so pretty. <laughs> Sorry. You guessed it, these are my slippery shoes. This should be safe, we're fine. That is a very seaweedy, as we say in my family. Anyways, anyone who's been to the ocean knows what that smells like. Fantastic. And now we're coming up on the spooky cave. I'm not scared. It doesn't help that there's a curve. It makes it extra spooky. Seriously though, this thing is kind of creepy. You go around a curve by yourself, it's like, it's fine, it's fine. Oh good, there's another one. These mansions are now taken care of by historical societies and serve as a reminder of our past. It's important to remember where we came from to learn how we can be better. The reality is, greed can consume anyone, no matter the scale. I know I have continuously fallen into that trap. Not on a mansion level, but you know what I mean. It can be easy to look back at these points in history and make a snap judgment of people. But I had an epiphany. What am I doing for my neighbor? How have I been giving back to others? How have I created a better place for my fellow humans? The answer is, I don't know if I have a worthy answer at this point in time but it was a refreshing slap in the face for me to self-reflect and to realize my own human nature. I guess that's what I love about history. There are millions of lessons to learn when offered some much needed perspective. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm sorry, I don't know where all this came from. Someone recently asked me what my channel was about and I did not have an answer. Seems like a travel, self-reflection, rambling, goofy, historical, hybrid thing. I'm still figuring it out. And thank you for bearing with me. Anyways, I am so excited to share with you all my next adventure. I will give you a hint. We are going south. This part is actually a cliff walk. <laughs> kind of slippery too. Hmm. Should be fine. <laughs> Sit and scoot. Ooh, just, okay. There we go. Ooh. There we go. <sighs> no problem. This is fine. And now the inevitable moment that has been foreshadowed to this entire video. Yes, I just fell. <laughs> <laughs> The rocks are slippery, okay? <laughs> I'm so glad I finally caught me falling on camera. <laughs> survived again. 
So today we are going to do something I don't normally do, and that is dare to enter into a city. Yes, I know. But the plan of attack is to stay away from the city part and head straight towards the parks and the nature. So let's go. Also, I'm not naturally peppy in the morning, so we are going to stop at one of the one million Dunkin' Donuts along the ride to get there because this is New England and that's how we do it here. No, but really, like, there's an insane amount of Dunkin' Donuts. It's just, it's absurd, honestly. But they're all still in business, so we got a bunch of coffee addicts up here. It's wicked good. Also, you could tell from the eye bags that I did not sleep great. So, we are going to try to maintain our energy levels as we walk around today. Usually when I go outside, I like get picked up with energy, but you know how it is. Ooh, not a bad view. All right, we made it. Um, <laughs> the thing about cities is like, you can't just go outside, like to the bathroom. Um, so I gotta find a bathroom because I drank a, I drank a coffee this morning. So, and then we'll get started. And yes, I know this outfit is confusing.